The reading comes from Deuteronomy chapter 5, verses 19 to 33. This can be found on page 185 in your Bibles. Deuteronomy chapter 5, verses 19 to 33. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife. You shall not set your desire on your neighbor's house or land, his manservant or maidservant, his ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. These are the commandments the Lord proclaimed in a loud voice to your whole assembly there on the mountain from out of the fire, from out of the fire, the cloud and the deep darkness. And he added nothing more. Then he wrote them on two stone tablets and gave them to me. When you heard the voice out of the darkness, while the mountain was ablaze with fire, all the leading men of your tribes and your elders came to me. And you said, The Lord our God has shown us his glory and his majesty, and we have heard his voice from the fire. Today we have seen that a man can live even if God speaks with him. But now, why should we die? This great fire will consume us, and we will die if we hear the voice of the Lord our God any longer. For what mortal man has ever heard the voice of the living God speaking out of the fire as we have, and survived? Go near and listen to all that the Lord our God says. Then tell us whatever the Lord our God tells you. We will listen and obey. The Lord heard you when you spoke to me, and the Lord said to me, I have heard what this people said to you. Everything they said was good. Oh, that their hearts would be inclined to fear me and keep all my commands always, so that it might go well with them and their children forever. Go, tell them to return to their tents but you stay here with me so that I may give you all the commands, decrees, and laws that you are to teach them to follow in the land I am giving them to possess. So be careful to do what the Lord your God has commanded you. Do not turn aside to the right or to the left. Walk in all the way that the Lord your God has commanded you so that you may live and prosper and prolong your days in the land that you will, you will possess. This is the word of the Lord. Now we're going to be thinking about Deuteronomy. You join us after a few weeks of looking at this book that's thousands of years old that you'd think would be slightly removed, wouldn't you? But let me ask you a question. Because um, as uh, down the corridor we have a room used for the youth, uh, it's become a bit of a storage room, but the good news, uh, young people, we're going to be redoing it. And uh, I had the great joy of buying some IKEA units. Um, and I think now, after spending most of my adult life building IKEA units, I'm a pro. So here's my question for you. Are you a person attentive to every word of the manual, or are you leave it in the box and just go for it? Okay, come on, let's, let's own up. Who's, who's a, I will read the manual and obey what it says. Hands up. A good few. Who's, I'm just going to go for it. And probably the few, who wouldn't touch DIY with a barge bowl? <laughs> There's a couple. Okay. Well, statistically, apparently, 25% of people read manuals. 75% leave it to one side. In fact, ladies, you'd think you'd be more obedient, don't you? You're less likely to be obedient than men. And young people, we are more likely to decide we know best than our older generation. You see, I must admit that having done a few Ikeas, I kind of know what's going to happen. I kind of know where the bits go and the screws are familiar. I'm a leave-it-in-the-box kind of man now. So young people, if the unit in the, young, in the youth room looks slightly wonky, you know who to blame. But I wonder when it comes to the Christian life, are we avid manual readers or do we just go with it because we know what we're doing? Are we avid manual readers or just go with it because we know what we're doing? Because when we come to this thing, the Ten Commandments, and we see these ten things God wants his people to do, 
I wonder what goes through your head. I know it. It's obvious, isn't it? I mean, come on. Do not murder. I mean, this week, do not steal. Don't, don't give false testimony. Don't lie. Don't covet your neighbor's wife. Don't, don't long after stuff that's not yours. I mean, kind of we know it, don't we? But if the statistics are true of flat pack furniture when it comes to the Christian life, only 25% of us would attentively read it. Most of us would just decide, well, we know what we're doing. And perhaps if you're not a Christian here, you just go, that's common sense. But as we come to these words... Look where they begin and end, why God gives them. If you've got a Bible open, do open it up, because otherwise you're just listening to a young man ramble. If not, we're going to let God speak. Look, chapter 5, page 184, verse 6. Here's where he begins. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. It sounds strange to us, isn't it? But for God's people, Israel, as they hear this, I am the Lord your God who loves you. I've freed you. I've brought you out of oppression. I've brought you into something good and prosperous and wonderful. I'm the God who loves you. And look what he longs, chapter 5, verse 29 at the end. Oh, that their hearts would be inclined to fear me and keep all my commands. What does God long? Is that people would love him back. He longs for a relationship. A relationship he's brought them out of Egypt from, out of slavery, And he wants them, with all of their hearts, to love him as they do these things in the middle. You see, as we look at a list of rules, perhaps if you're children here, you just think, gosh, what a boring, dull person. You know, this is like, mum, I've got to tidy my room, I've got to put out the rubbish, I've got to feed the guinea pigs, I've got to do all these things. Or, Or adults, we kind of see it as like, you know, legislation gone mad. Oh. Really? We have to do all these things? But if we concentrate on the rules without the ruler, we've missed the point. And if, like Ikea furniture, we we worry about the instructions rather than the maker, we've missed the point. The point of this is to help God's people know what it is to have a relationship with him. Okay, James, you say, all right, fine. I know not to steal. I mean, did anyone here decide on the way past the shop that they just quickly shove a loaf of bread up their jacket? If this is the time to be honest, I promise there's no police. Probably I'm guessing not. I'm guessing that you didn't decide just to uh, announce on social media this morning that you, your neighbour next door happens to be an international jewel thief just because you didn't want to, you like giving false testimony. Equally, I'm guessing that you potentially this morning didn't just decide, quite like my next door neighbor's wife, I think I'll uh, marry her as well. We kind of know it, don't we? That's what I thought as I read it. I haven't stolen this week. I don't think I told a lie. And I don't think I wanted somebody else's wife. Well, then we go home, don't we? Well, what do they have to do with us? We, we know this, we do this. But then as I started to think some more, and as I started just to think a little bit deeper, and started thinking about, you, you shall not steal, as I was trying to complete my tax return, and as I thought about this figure that I have to enter, that says how much cleaning has been done to keep your office tidy, and I thought, I'm sure I've done loads of hoovering. The temptation to put a big number in there so that the tax bill I owed the government would be smaller was large. As I started to think about the number of parking tickets I got from Asda in Sutton, and as I parked there this week and thought, it doesn't matter if I'm half an hour late, I thought, do not steal. As I was helping one of the children prepare for a test and the temptation um, as they had the, uh, the answers in the book, just to encourage them to flick it over and have a look, to cheat, do not steal the answers. Or whether it may be the fact that a distant family member has Sky Sports, Mobile Pass, or a Netflix, or Amazon Prime, and I could use it. Well, was that stealing? And then I thought about the conversations I'd had with people this week and just the selective retelling of events that made me look slightly better. 
thought, perhaps there were a few lies or half-truths that had been in there. I had a bad back at the beginning of the week, and the temptation to say to Anthony and Jackie, I'm still really sick as the week went on. Or perhaps it wasn't my neighbour's wife that I was coveting, but as the Lamborghini steamed up Wallington High Street and I thought, that would be nice. Or in the stresses and strains of this week, thinking, if only I was a Tesco delivery driver. Just longing for something else, something a bit more comforting, a bit more pleasurable. It started to go a little bit deeper than just, we know that. And the trouble is, when you take these 3,000-year-old commands and you start to see what Jesus thinks of them in the New Testament, he doesn't say, don't bother. If you were here with us last week with Harry, you saw as he takes a command like, you shall not murder, and starts to expose the heart and shows that it's anger in our heart that's the issue that leads to murder. That, that's the issue. You start to see what he's getting at. And with these three things, he starts to unravel in our hearts why they're there. Because of the temptation to serve ourselves. You shall not steal. More for me. You shall not lie. Make me look good. You shall not cover wanting something so badly. As you see Jesus go to the temple and he says of the people doing their religious business here, you're treating this place like a den of robbers. You're stealing from God the worship he deserves. I started to think, okay, where, where might we steal from God? I mean, I have to be here on a Sunday. The temptation to not be here on a Sunday and have me time or whether that's still the case now, of first thing in the morning or last thing at night, thinking, I'm too tired, I've got too much on to do to spend time praying with God or to listen to him and his word. Temptation to steal from the Lord. Temptation to even steal, by the way, in church, isn't it? It's a great joy to be here, isn't it, today? We get to enjoy a warm building in comfy seats whilst people do stuff, and then we're fed tea and cake. Brilliant, praise the Lord. I think we've got two birthday cakes as well, Susie's and someone else as well. It's a great temptation in church life just to consume, isn't there? Just take. That's why the New Testament encourages Christians to not give up meeting together, but to encourage one another to give to yourself, to give to the other person, to, hide, to, to, to ask of them, to, to press in, as it were, to them, to encourage them, to not steal yourself away, to not steal encouragement from them. Or as Paul speaks about, those who are too lazy to work to provide for their own needs. They, they sort of depend on others. And you start to see with Jesus how this, this thing of self-giving can mean that I, I just expect stuff from people. We live in an age of entitlement, don't we? How the Bible, Jesus' words want to go against that. Of working hard ourselves rather than just expecting others to treat me in the way that I would expect to be treated. Jesus himself goes further to the heart as he talks about lying and speaks about slander and gossip, about rage against each other. As it comes to the communion and the act of people falling out so that they won't receive communion together because of lies that have gone on. Perhaps even of denying Jesus ourselves in our workplace and homes. When people ask us, are you, are you a Christian? Well, yeah. Or whether it's lusting after stuff, longing for things that will bring me comfort and pleasure, for work, for family, for, for health, for stuff, for the perfect life. Jesus gets to the heart of the matter and shows to the root, you and I are the same. We want to serve ourselves. That's why we need these commands. If you want, like that old toy that you used to, you used to flip out, put it down on the surface, and then you wait a few minutes before it then popped back the right way up in the air. These commands are given to pop us the right way out, rather than from serving ourselves but to serving others. Yet if we're honest, and if your head and your heart is starting to go, Okay, I knew these, but I've started to read the manual a bit closer. I think 
that's me. Friends, there's all of us. There isn't anyone on the level of thought or heart or mind or action who will not have broken these ways of God. That's why God sends one man, Jesus. One man who bucks the trend, who does these things, who doesn't steal. In fact, he gives What does he do? He leaves the riches of heaven to come to the poverty of earth, to lavish his grace, to give his kindness and love to other people. In fact, he's a man that endures these commands by humanity as people at his death steal his clothes. They steal the honor that is due his name as as the king of heaven. He's a man who doesn't lie but comes full of grace and truth who speaks of his Father in heaven clearly and honestly and openly, who tells the truth at all times, who even speaks the truth when put on a mock trial of total injustice. A man who bears other people's false testimony. A man who does not lust after other things, but has a heart of self-control and a longing only for his heavenly Father. Who doesn't come to fulfill his own needs, but comes for the good of others. He experiences humanity's lust for power and control as they nail him to a cross. You see, friends, we need that man. That man that would have done these laws. That man that would have given us that forgiveness and relationship. You see, for you and for I, chapter 5, verse 6 could say, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of your sin, out of the land of slavery. And what he longs for, chapter 5, verse 29, is that you and I, oh, that your hearts would be inclined to fear and keep my commands. You have been given my forgiveness You have even been given my spirit, which comes to live in your heart. The New Testament speaks of the law of God being written on our hearts now. So we don't need stone tablets or pretty pictures to tell us what to do, but God longs to imprint it, put it in our DNA, so that we long to live out these ways. He writes them deep within us. So the Christian longs to live a life not of stealing, but of sharing. He longs to do that. And friends, if your heart is starting to just be a little bit encouraged, a little bit burning, thank you, Lord, that you've done this, then he's at work in you. Rejoice, dear friend. You see, when it comes to obedience, we don't have to be like, I've got to look at the manual. I just want to do it on my own. I get to look at the manual. What a delight. This is life-giving, freedom-giving. This is not to be pulling my hair out because I can't find two pieces of A. No, this is to rejoice that God has given me these life-giving ways to, to live for him. It's not accidental obedience. It's not obedience by arm twisting. This is my heart on fire, delighting to live for my Lord. So what does it mean? What does it mean for you and I this week? Well, if we're not to steal, what are we to do? We're to share with our hands. Don't steal, share with your hands. It's like Jesus himself, isn't it? It's to give of ourselves, to give to others, both of whether that be those in need or, or, or to not build up little numerical monetary empires for ourselves, to give away. What a joy it was to see the other week at harvest, people doing just that in these economic times but to give of ourselves. What would that mean for you this week? I mean, you could put that even in just a practice. This morning, as as you head from here, what would it mean to give yourself to another? To, To share with them, to ask of them, to encourage them. What would it mean throughout the week for you to be focused not on what your empire gains, but on how you might give to others? Giving of your time giving of yourself, giving to others. And it's why we love being part of a church family. It's why it's a great joy to give to one another. Because ironically, in God's economy, when we give, he so wonderfully gives back. It works. 
So don't steal, share with your hands. Don't lie, speak truth with your lips. You all know the places where you particularly need to speak truth this week. Might it be tomorrow as people say, what did you do on Sunday? You kind of don't have to fluff an answer about being somewhere in North Wallington near a building. I was at church. Might it be in situations you're in where you need to stand up and speak up the truth? By the way, that doesn't mean that you have carte blanche to say, I don't like your dress, you're a horrible person, and you shouldn't drive that way. This isn't a cause to be unkind, but how might we speak the truth in love? You could have a go at putting that into practice as you meet other people over coffee. Perhaps it may be someone you've never spoken to before. Perhaps you could go and encourage them, speak truth to them. Perhaps it may be someone who's struggling, who just needs something of the gospel to be spoken into their lives. Where could you speak truth? And lastly, don't lust. Let self-control be in your heart. You see, I think the opposite of kind of longing, the cravings of my heart for me in the New Testament is one of controlling myself, of saying, James, the Lamborghini or the trifle, you don't need it. Jesus is what you need. Where might you need to exercise self-control? Where that might be clicking off the screen, setting up the filters to block your internet, where may that be taking off the shopping app on your phone, which means you don't have to keep spending money like no tomorrow, where may it mean you just stop and think before you let your heart run away with you? We live in a day and age, don't we, of high emotions. When I feel it, I speak it. Where may we actually need to check it? Perhaps you can have a go at that just as you're leaving here. Perhaps the desire within you to leg it home and do whatever you want to do may just say, hang on, I'm going to give someone 10 minutes. Self-control for myself. When we do share, speak the truth, let self-control reign. We enjoy the privilege of a relationship with our Heavenly Father, one who has showered his grace on us, one who has given us his spirit that we might live his way. We might, in the words that we've seen time after time in Deuteronomy, choose life. Not a boring, dull, monotonous life, but a life that God has given, of giving ourselves away to others, that we might love him and love them. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you and we're terrified that you see into our hearts. You know where we haven't and where we're tempted to steal, to lie, to lust. But we thank you, Father, through your Son, your perfect, gracious, truth-giving Son, that you have forgiven us and changed us. May you help us today, even in these coming few minutes, to be those that you flip the right way out, that we may share, speak truth, and let self-control reign. For we ask it. Amen.